When we talk about what happened on January 6th, it is important to consider to what degree the events of that day were a reaction or a response to a changing and increasingly diversifying America. The fact of the matter is a lot of progress has been made in recent years when it comes to a more representative democracy in this country. This past election cycle, we focused a lot on the bonkers, truth-denying slate of candidates who were up and down the ballot, but the midterms also produced some pretty incredible and historic firsts. Democrat Mary Paltola had back-to-back -back wins in a special election and the midterm election for Alaska's at-large congressional seat. She became the first the first Alaska native elected to Congress. Over in California, Democratic Senator Alex Padilla, who was appointed by Governor Gavin Newsom in 2021 to fill the seat of Vice President Kamala Harris when she became vice president, he became the first Latino elected to represent California in the Senate. Down in the House, in Oregon, Republican Lori Chavez de Reamer and Democrat Andrea Salinas will be the first Latina members of Congress from their state. Pennsylvania Democrat Summer Lee will be the first black woman to represent her state in Congress. Democrat Delia Ramirez will be the first Latina to represent Illinois. And Yadira Caraveo will not only be the first Latina to represent the state of Colorado in Congress, but she will also be the state's first congresswoman of color, period. In Maryland, Democrat Wes Moore was elected the first black governor of that state, becoming only the third black person ever elected governor in American history. In addition to becoming the first female governor of Massachusetts, Democrat Maura Healey will also be one of the first openly lesbian governors, along with Oregon's Democratic governor-elect, Tina Kotek. And in two months, Virginia's fourth congressional district is poised to add one more name to the list of historic firsts. Virginia State Senator Jennifer McClellan this week won the Democratic nomination in the race to succeed late Congressman Don McEachin. Congressman McEachin died at the age of 61 after a long battle with cancer just weeks after winning re-election. McClellan, for her part, will face Republican Leon Benjamin, but the seat is expected to stay in Democratic hands. Leon Benjamin lost to Congressman McEachin by 30 points last month. With McClellan expected to win the seat, she would become the first black woman to represent Virginia in Congress. And as she put it this week, quote, bring a new perspective to a delegation that has never had a black woman sitting at the table. Joining us now for her first nationally televised interview is Virginia State Senator Jennifer McClellan, the Democratic candidate for Virginia's 4th Congressional District. State Senator McClellan, thanks for joining us this evening. Um, and I don't want to say congratulate, well, congratulations on the first leg, and we are, will be watching closely the next leg of all of this. When, we, when I give that laundry list the historic first from the midterm elections, I wonder how it feels to be potentially in a group of people who are really pushing the ball forward in terms of inclusivity and a more representative democracy. Well, it, it feels incredible. I mean, first of all, that in 2022, we're still having firsts is, is incredible. But to know that I could be the first black woman uh, from the same district that sent the first black man to Congress over 130 years ago, um, just just particularly warms my heart. I wonder if you look at this in the same way that I do, which is I, I don't think that the events, you know, I always used to say, I, quoting myself, but the, January 6th and January 5th were not unlinked. January 5th was the day Georgia sent Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff, a black man and a Jewish man, to represent uh, the state to the Senate, the United States Senate. The next day, there was a violent attack on that Capitol. Now, I'm not saying it was a direct result of the Warnock and Ossoff elections, but it seems to me that there are these seismic forces in American politics, one that is very resistant to change, that is angry and will get violent about that change, and another that is relentlessly pushing for that change, for an America that looks different than it has for the last 200 years. Do you see, do you see the landscape in that way? Do you see that sort of being the existential fight of the country right now in terms of politics? I do, and it's not the first time. And as a matter of fact, what also happened on, on January 5th, um, I was so excited about uh, Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff getting elected that I, I went to look at my father's Bible. We were coming up on the anniversary of his passing, um, and he was on my mind. And in that Bible, I found a copy of the poll tax receipt uh, for the poll tax that he had to pay when he first registered to vote in Tennessee in the 40s. Um, and I thought to myself, 
this is poetic justice. I wish he was here to see it. And then, of course, the next day we saw uh, the violent backlash. But just as um, John Mercer Langston and those black men who were elected to Congress in the in the 1870s, they also faced a violent backlash, voter suppression uh, and lies and propaganda. And it's a cycle that repeats itself. Uh, but it's a cycle that finally, I think, is going to be broken as we move forward. <clears throat> to that end, your opponent is an election denier. He's a Trump backer, Leon Benjamin. Um, your predecessor, uh, Congressman McEachin, refused to debate him. Uh, I wonder if you are going to take the same position. And if so, what is the best way to push back on fraudulent claims, on misinformation, on lies that actively undermine democracy? Well, first of all, he still has not conceded that he lost uh, the election in 2022, or I think even in 2020. And I take the same position until he concedes that he lost those elections. I see no point in uh, debating him because he's already shown that he's going to lie and not uh, discuss the truth. I'm going to talk to the voters of the 4th District directly and tell them about my extensive record representing them in the General Assembly my extensive record uh, in the community in this district, which I was born in, um, I'll be 50 years next week, um, and just talk directly to them. And I'm pretty sure that my views, my beliefs are more in line with those of the voters of this district than his. You know, we're in this moment where we so greatly debate who gets to tell the American story and your family very much is the American story, right? Your father having to pay a poll tax and now his daughter may be the first black woman elected to represent the state of Virginia in the House of Representatives. It's an extraordinary, you know, as much as we focus on the negatives, it's an extraordinary thing. It's overdue, but it's still an extraordinary thing worth worth pointing out. Virginia State Senator Jennifer McClellan, who is running as the Democratic candidate for Virginia's fourth congressional district. The race is not over yet, but we will be watching very, very, very closely. Good luck out there on the campaign trail in these closing days. Senator McClellan, thanks for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having me.